Hi, in this screencast we're going to look at some of the refactorings available in CLI. What I have here is a calendar type and let's suppose I want to rename it to base calendar. One of the ways to do it is to bring up the refactor this menu. And here I can use either keyboard shortcuts or the mouse to choose the refactoring that I want to perform. So in this case let's say I want the rename refactoring. What I can do is start typing right here. So let's say I want to change calendar to base calendar. I can press return. And now CLine has found that there is one usage of the word calendar which isn't in a code file. So I can press show usages. And if we scroll down below, we can see that one of the usages is actually in the CMake list file because our project is also called calendar. So that's a usage we probably want to exclude. And to exclude it, we right click the element and we choose exclude. We're now ready to perform the refactoring. So let's press do refactor and we're done. All the usages of calendar have been replaced with base calendar and we can see that the files have been renamed as well. Now let's look at the Gregorian calendar. It has a function called last month day and let's suppose I want to change the order of the arguments. So I want the year to come before the month. To do this, I can once again bring up the refactor this menu and this time I'll choose change signature. So here I can take the year parameter and I can move it before the month parameter. I perform the refactoring and now the order of the arguments have been changed. But has the usages been updated? Let's find out. So what I can do is I can press Alt of 7 and that searches for all the usages of this function. And if we look at the actual usage here inside main.cpp, you will see that the arguments year and month have been reversed as well. So obviously the refactoring worked. Now let's take a look at how to move a type into a different file. So for example, let's look at the general type. It only has a single static function, so we're okay to move it anywhere. Let's bring up the refactoring once again and choose move. So this time we have to specify where we actually want it to move. We can type it right here or we can go into the menu. We can certainly pick the actual file manually or we can search it by name. So in this case, I can also move it to base calendar like so. And after I press the move button, we can see that the whole definition of the function has been relocated to base calendar. Keep in mind that you can undo any refactoring that you perform. Just go into edit and undo move members, press OK, and the function is back where it started. CLine also has a copy refactoring. Let's take a look. So a copy essentially allows you to make a copy of the file you're currently in. So let's suppose I want a different implementation of this general static function. I can call it general2. Press OK and the file has been added. Since I'm under git source control, CLine is also asking whether I want it under git and I'll say yes to that as well. All right, now let's take a look at how to destroy things. Let's go into calendar.h, base calendar rather, and we have a field called mark. So let's go to its definition and try to delete it. Once again, using a refactoring to make sure we do it safely. So we're going to save delete. And this would search for all the usages of the field mark, including comments and strings and other text occurrences. So let's press OK. Now C line is telling us that there is one usage of mark, so deleting it just like that is not safe. We can certainly delete it anyway, but let's take a look at the usages. All right, so we have a usage in the getter. We can double click that and we can see that we may as well, first of all, get rid of get mark and maybe set mark as well. So let's get rid of get mark. Once again, doing the refactoring to make sure we do it safely. Perform save delete here. Press OK. That's done. And perform the same thing here. Save delete. And we're done as well. So now let's get back to the top of the file. And we can finally delete the field as well. And we're done. Now let's take a look at some of the ways of extracting data from functions and uh, creating new declarations in place. Let's go into Hebrew calendar. Let's jump to the CPP file and let's find something that we want to extract into a variable. So for example, here we can see lots of repetitions of 1080 times hours elapsed plus parts elapsed. So maybe we want to calculate this just once. Once again, we bring up the refactoring menu and this time we choose variable. So here C line goes off and looks for all the scopes in which we can extract a variable. So I want this particular set of elements. I press return and C line is telling me that there is actually three locations where this can be extracted. So I choose to replace all the three occurrences, press return, and then I have to give this variable a name. So let's keep it as I. 
As you can see, the code has been updated accordingly. All right, let's try another example in the type general. Let's jump to the actual code for X day on or before. And now what I can do is I can take the seven and turn it into a constant. Once again, bring up the refactoring menu, choosing constant, choosing the seven. And here I can define the name for it, like days per week. I can also choose to put it in the header. Now I can choose to declare it static. So let's press return and we're done. Now if we go and look at the definition, we can see that the definition itself appears in the header, just as we specified. Now let's look at parameters. Let's go to Julian calendar and look at the definition of last month day. Here we're checking for a leap year. So maybe we want this as an argument to the function instead. Once again, we bring up the refactoring and this time we extract a parameter. So I'll call it leap year. And now it's up to the caller to give us information on whether it's a leap year or not. Now let's take a look at extracting something to a preprocessing definition. So let's go to Gregorian calendar. Let's jump to the actual CPP file and let's see what we can extract here. So let's take this value, for example, instead of a constant, we're going to extract it to a hash defined preprocessor instruction. Once again, bringing up the refactor this menu, this time we will choose define. We'll give it a name, let's say max days per year. We can also once again choose whether to put it in the header or not. If I don't want to put it in the header, I'll just hold Alt and press H to turn off that check mark. And after I press return, we're done. So here is the replacement and here is the actual definition. All right, now let's go into Hebrew calendar. Now here we have a definition for a Hebrew epoch. Now let's suppose instead of storing it as an int, I want my own type def so I can change it later on. Once again, I can bring up the refactoring menu and I can choose type def. And it tells me that there are actually two locations where constant is being used, but I'll replace only this one. So my new type def is going to be called epoch and I simply type it in, press return and I'm done. I have a new type def. Now when your functions get complicated, it's useful to extract part of the complicated calculation into a separate function. So let's take a look at that. Let's go into a Gregorian calendar and let's jump into the actual code. And here we can see a rather convoluted calculation involving the year. So we want to check if this is in fact a leap year and we want to maybe do it in a separate function. So how would we do it? Well, first of all, I'm going to use control W to select the code that I want to extract. And now I'll bring up the refactoring menu. I will choose extract method. I'll give this method a name like is leap year and I'll press extract. As you can see, I now have an invocation and here is the actual implementation of is leap year. Now let's suppose I decide to go back and actually have this whole definition in line inside the brackets here. Well, there's a refactoring for this too, and it's called inline. So let's once again, bring up the menu, choose inline, press the inline here, and we're back to where we started. Another thing that you can do in the context of inheritance hierarchies is you can pull members up and push members down. So let's take a look at how it works. Let's go into Gregorian calendar. And let's suppose I want to pull this operator int up the hierarchy into the base calendar. Once again, I bring up the refactor this menu and I can choose pull members up. So I get to select what members I'm pulling up and the base class has been selected for me. Let's press the pull button. And now C line is telling me that I need to escalate the visibility for certain members because otherwise I won't be able to work with them. So I'm going to agree to change the visibility from protected to public by saying yes. And once I'm done, you can see that here in the base calendar, we end up defining that operator. Now suppose we change our minds and we want to put the operator int back into the subclass. Well, for this, we have a symmetric refactoring called push members down. So once again, let's bring up this refactoring. Let's choose push members down. And here we get to select which members we're actually pushing down. So in this case, once again, operator int, but we also can choose the inheritors, which are going to have this function implemented. In this case, we'll put it back into Gregorian calendar. So after I press push, we end up back in Gregorian calendar and you can see that the function is back where it started. So this has been a small demonstration of some of C-Line's refactoring capabilities. And to find out more 
and try these for yourself, go to jetbrains.com slash sealine. Thanks for watching.